Hi, I'm Manda Louisa from The Painted Lady. Now, following up from our shopping trip, you will remember that Paula and I bought a couple of interesting items when we went to In Excess. Um, I decided on this bird bath, they call it, it's, um, just because it's a beautiful shell shape. It's already a gorgeous shape and I can use that to make something look really pretty. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is put some moulds along the bottom here and then it's going to be paint effects. So I'll go through all the products that I'm going to be using. This by the way was as cheap as chips, $2.95 in, in excess. So I was chuffed with that. So I'm going to be using, I'll um, just bring you around so you can get a better look at my little arsenal of goodies. Okie dokie. I'm going to be using, for the moulds, I'm going to be using um, Amazing Resin and it really is amazing. This is, this is my um, choice for making moulds. They come out super smooth, super flat. The only downside to them is when they've set, they're hard, very brittle. Yeah, you can't bend them. But if I was to heat them um, before I use them, then it gives it just, just a little degree of bend. Not much, but just a little bit of movability. Okay, so um, I'm hoping that will work. I'm hoping that's going to be enough for what I need. I'm going to be using um, some IOD moulds. I found a whole host of them in my workshop. This wasn't the mould I was originally going to use. I was going to use something that was, that was really quite small and it would have taken me um, lots of them to decorate. So I've rediscovered this one and I love this one. I'm going to be using the laurel leaves and I'll probably get in there um, a crown and a bee as well. So that I'll be doing with the resin. Um, I've got four different coloured paints, um, or just chalk paints, quite neutral colours that I'm going to use to blend together. Um, because I'm not going to take them straight from the pot, I've just got an old palette here. Yes, it's dirty, but it's dry. Um, so I'm going to be decanting the, the chalk paint into the palettes. Uh, I've got my brush, it's just so I can sort of dip in and you know, take what I want from each colour and, and use it that way. So we're doing some blending on there. What else have I got? I have cleaned it first of all, obviously, with my sugar soap. So my bird bath is now super clean. I have got um, this powder, which is, it, it's a little bit like salt wash. Um, it's a texturising powder. Okay, so that's going to give me some texture. I've also got um, some sea salt granules, just the type that you would get from your supermarket, again, for texture. And a little bottle of, um, that I've made up of 50-50 white vinegar and water. Okay, that's going to give it a nice textured, weathered, drippy sort of look. Um, and this is a Mr. Bottle. Got this from, um, I can't remember, what, it, you know, local drugstore. And these are the kind of things that you would decant, and, um, you, you, or you'd spray yourself with water when you're hot and flushed and what have you. So it's a Mr. rather than a spray. I've also got here my two-part mitre glue, which... Um, I absolutely hate using because I tend to get myself very stuck up uh, but it is fantastic it's it's instant yeah so we'll be using that as well so I guess the first thing I need to be doing is making my molds now as I say I'm going to be using the resin what I will do is I will um, just preheat the oven on the lowest setting just so I can warm this up it always works better if you've got a warm mold and then I can mix up 50-50 of my two-part resin. I'm hoping I've got enough for this. Fingers crossed I have. So that's your 50-50, so half and half of each of those, equal amounts. Um, whiz those up. I use um, uh, a paper cup. So whiz those up, and then you can just pour it into these. The beauty of these new moulds that the IOD girls have done is, I'm hoping you can see it, it's got like a little ridge almost. Can you see just on my fingertip there? 
Yeah, it's got like a, a little ridge. So rather than being absolutely flat to the base, it's got a little ridge. And um, that helps give it a, an absolutely clean line when you take it out. I hope I've not used it yet. So we'll experiment. So that's what I'm going to be doing first. Um, I will come back to you. I'll get that all organised and I'll come back to you when we're ready to uh, stick on our moulds and start painting. Right, okay, we're back. Um, if you can hear a whirring sound, I've had to put the fan on. It's such a beautiful hot day today here down in Dorset that um, <laughs> just a bit. So, I fed the dog, I've got my daughter's dinner on, the moulds are ready. Don't they look fab? Look at those. See how smooth they've come out? So we're ready to pop those out and they come out so beautifully. So we'll just lick, oh you can't see that, let's get you down here. Sorry. Oh, lummy. Okay, so they're so easy to just pop out. You just press them from behind and they peel out. Look at that, beautiful. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so actually they've still got a little bit of flexibility to them, so I'm going to get those on straight away. What I'm hoping to do is set my laurel wreaths around the base and then if I do get any gaps I might put something else in between. So let's get on with those. Right, this two part glue that I was mentioning earlier, you've got a spray and you've got a liquid. It's like super glue, it's a bit like super glue. So what you would do is uh, the liquid will go onto the back of the mould and the spray then goes on to what you want to adhere it to. So let's have a go at that. Okie dokie. So just little, you don't need a huge amount. So I'm just putting little droplets along. Just enough. Because this stuff works, this stuff really works. And then I'm going to spray the base where I want it to go. Which way does it get? Oh, so I think I need this one needs to go that way, does it? No, that way. Okay. And I'm just popping it on there. Okay. Hold it for a couple of seconds. I can already feel that I've, I've got myself glued up. Um, and this is why I get in such a bother with this two-part glue. It's fantastic, it's instant, and it stays. Um, it's just me that's the awkward so-and-so. Messy painter, and I do tend to get stuff everywhere. So, let's get the other one on. Let's prise it out. I don't think I'm going to have the room, actually, for my big... Oh, ah, I know where I could go. Okay, so let's get this one out. It's still lovely and flexible, which is great because it's still slightly warm from coming out of the oven. Now it only took, take the lid off, silly Billy. Right, it only took uh, 10 minutes to set in. Okay, so I've got my spots of glue. I'm going in with my spray. This one. Okay, now I think what I will do is I have got a little bit of room that I can put something else on. So while it's still flexible, I'm thinking I might put the crown in there. Okay, so that's stuck on, nice and firm. Let's see what else I've got here. So I've got this lovely crown. See how perfectly it comes out. I mean, look at that. You can see all the detail. This is why I love this resin so much. It's called amazing. It is amazing. I love it. Now, this one, 
does fit beautifully in that space where the laurel wreaths have been so I'm kind of liking that do I want to put the bee in instead again look at that Ooh, look at that detail My beautiful bee let's try that no I think I think the crown now I have put it slightly off centre and the thing with this glue is because it's instant I wonder if I can turn that right. oh no I can turn the top a bit that's good okay so it's not as dramatic as I thought so yeah because this glue um, really is instant um, it doesn't give you much time to play with so this one's a little bit drier it's not as flexible so what I'm going to do let's pop you up here so I can talk to you face to face what I'm going to do is use my heat gun okay um, you can use a hair dryer you can use a heat gun I'm using the heat gun because it's a little quieter and you don't want to be blasted out it still does make some noise so apologies but it's certainly quieter than my hair dryer so I'm just heating the back of my mould it's hard to hold it up because it's hot Unless the setting. So this should just give me enough. Oh yes, just got a little bit of buoyancy in there. So let's get this glue on quickly before it resets. Okay, spray my base. Oh, ah, it is hot. <laughs> Trust me, it's hot. But it allows some flexibility so I will show you but I'm getting my, my fingers stuck a little okay so there's the base there's the molding on the base my fingers are covered in um, this, this, this this part of the glue and it's like super glue super glue I think um, well, I, I believe I was told the super glue was invented um, so that in the I think it was in one of the wars anyway um, to stick skin together as a healing sort of mechanism. And my goodness, yes, it does. So I'll be picking that off later tonight. Okay, so got my moulds in place. Um, I guess I'm ready to start painting. Do you think the bee might look okay on there? That's the fingers. Look, do you think the bee would just fit in there? I think so. Should we give it a try? Okay, I think it fits in there quite flat. I am just going to heat it just a little bit, so excuse the noise. There's two heat settings to this particular model hot and flipping well hot. Flipping up will burn your fingers. So just be careful of that. It is a hot glue gun. I mean it is a hot um, a heat gun so it does exactly what it says on the tin. Okay, it's got my sticky stuff. Quick spray. Line him up. Hold him down and he's right into that moulding there. So he's settled into there really nicely. Just giving me enough flexibility to squeeze him into that space. And I think it couldn't be better. Little bee sitting in the shell. Okay. So the next part we're going to do, done our moulds, we've glued them on we're going to get down to some painting. I'm going to decant my paints, get everything ready and we'll get painting. So we are ready to get on with some painting. Um, what I have done, uh, without telling you, but I'm telling you now, is I have put on a coat of matte finish, um, which is this. So it's Fairy Chic's matte finish. And I've just applied it with a sponge, you know, one of these 
jobbies that you get from the heart, um, from, well, get from anywhere, don't you? Um, so I've given it a coat of that just because I'm a little concerned with how the chalk paint will adhere to the plastic. Um, I mean, I'm doing loads and loads of layers on this, so I'm quite sure we'll be fine, but it was just in case. So we've had a coat of uh, matte finish going on here first. And what I'm going, I've decided to do, what I'm going in with first is, um, it's Annie Sloan, it's Primer Red. And it's this lovely, deep, browny red. And I thought that would make quite a good base for um, all of my colours to, to go on to. And I don't mind then if I've got a little bit of green showing through, I don't mind if I've got a little bit of red showing through. Um, I have, this is quite thick, so sometimes paints do thicken up, and I've had this quite a while, so the, it is quite a thick consistency. Um, I'm not watering this down, but where I've started making my um, palette for my colours, I did add some water to that to give it a bit of um, movability, really, make it a bit more fluid. Okay. So I'm going to coat this, just give it one coat of the Primer Red. Um, it's called Primer Red. It's, it's not a primer as such. The colour is Primer Red. Um, but it does make, it's, it, it is going to make a very nice base for this, I think. So um, I'll get this done. And um, sorry, it's a terrible light here, isn't there? As, as the sun has moved around the house. Um, I'll get this fully painted, give it a good coat, get it dried, and then we can start off with the other colours. They are very neutral colours. They're creams and browns. I want to give it that sort of French feel. Um, and then I'll be rubbing back in places. But we'll get to that. Right, so we are now at the position where we can go in and with all the other colours. This... Um, has had a, just one coat of Annie Sloan Primer Red. Um, I've given it what I would call a 95% coverage. So I, I don't mind that I've missed spots because as I say, I'm gonna be rubbing back, I'm gonna be wet distressing. Um, I'm gonna be throwing all sorts at this, which I will go through with you. It doesn't need to be perfect. There's, there's lots of bits missing. I have remembered to do the base as well. I really didn't want to have um, a plastic looking base so I am going to be working on that as well uh, so we've still got the moulds in there as I say just a slapdash coverage doesn't need to be anything fancy this is just the base of what we're going to go on with so the colour palette that I'm using is down here let me show you um, I've just decanted various colours they're all Annie Sloan colours and they are quite thick simply because they are the ends of tins that I've been using on previous projects. So it's no disrespect to the, the, the brand. Um, paints do tend to thicken up once they're um, exposed to air. But what I have done is just, you can water them down quite nicely. So that's not a problem, either in, the, in here or on, on the project itself. But what I have got, so I've got my um, I've got my primer red and I've got various neutrals that I'm using. Um, this old ochre here, if you can see, I'll take you back. So this is old ochre. That's going to be sort of my top layer, as it were. And then in here, I've got some of the texturizing powder and some of the sea salt. So I'm just going to be dipping, spreading applying kind of willy-nilly yep trying to get into some of the crevices but it's going to be a series of layers so there will be some good coverage um, I can also just use a dry cloth to distress back I can use a fine sandpaper to distress back I can use wet wipes to do a wet distress so there's going to be lots of that going on. Um, in fact, if we just give this a little spray now, I did do a little bit of just dry distressing with it. If I spray this back now, 
just my shop cloth. You can see that when I wet distress it, I can start bringing back some of those original layers. And that's what I'm just going to continue to do. Building in layers, distressing, getting back the undertones. And that's what I'm just going to continue to do. So when that's ready, we'll move on to the next job. Right, so I've just come back to my project after having to go off and do some mum stuff. Um, and I'm looking at it and I'm really liking what's happening here. You can see we've got um, different layers, different colours coming through underneath the sort of stony colours that I've put on there. And I'm loving that I've got some of that um, primer red coming through. I've even got some of the original green coming through. And I'm kind of happy with that. But what I'm not completely happy with is the base. Now, I love what I've done, but I think it needs more. So I need to get something going on along this part here, if you can see. It's just looking a bit bland, shall we say. But um, I've run out of my two-part resin. So I've had a rummage in the workshop and I have managed to find some of my um, paper clay. Now I have had it sealed so hopefully it won't be too dry. So we'll have a go with this and what I'm thinking of doing is um, still working with these lo lovely laurel wreaths but I may have to shorten them. And again, that's easy to do with this paper clay. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you down just so you can see how I'm applying and working with this paper clay. If you worry, hopefully you can see. Okay, so I've got my block of paper clay. I'm just picking off bits and pushing it into the mold. Now I have had this for quite a while and it is a little dry. I don't know whether moistening it would help, but we'll have a go. So let's get this pressed in. So as you can see, I'm just pressing it firmly into the mould. Okay. So I'm going to carry on doing that um, and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, so I have filled my moulds with the paper clay. It was a bit dry so I really needed to work it and I found the best method for doing that was to take off a little bit of my paper clay a little bit at a time just moisten my the palm of my hand and then roll the clay into that so it's just giving it a bit of moisture to, to a bit more flexibility so we and then it did need pushing in quite firmly and I've sort of used the that bit, the joint on my thumb to really press it down. Okay, so it is a bit hard on my hands. So I've got it in, and then what I did, because it's kind of standing proud, so I've gone in with my scraper, and I've just scraped down it, scraping it away from myself, as it were, to get off the excess, and remember I was speaking about those ridges that these new moulds have got in? I'm hoping that that will really help me to um, get a nice clean line. So let's get these out of the moulds and see if it's worked. Let's bring you down, 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 down. Okay, so again, just pushing from behind and easing the clay out. Got a few little breakages there. Let's see how we go. Pushing from behind and catching. Ah, I've broken, but I can still join those up when they're needed. Okay, don't forget I was maybe going to have to cut these anyway. Let's get the other one out, see if that's any better. This was the second what I did, making it moist, yep, yeah. making it moist in my hand has certainly worked better. Okay, so sorry, it's hard to angle this camera properly and my swivelly bit is under it, there we go. So, 
hope you can see. This is the one that broke because the clay was too dry. So I've had a couple of breakages there. This was the one that I did by moistening the clay in my hands and it's, it's worked so much better. But this is okay. As I say, we can still join those up when it's on and um, I think we'll be all right. So fixing them into place again, what I want to do is, oh, I've just broken that one. As I say, never mind. I want to get them, and the good thing about the paper clay is it's very pliable. Okay. So that's really going to help as I want to get these moulds on. So bring it round. I've decided to break that one further so that it actually joins up with this. This one needs to come round. And we'll add a bit more to the back. Find the right bits. Okay, so I think that's going to work. So I'm just going to get those glued in and then we can start the painting. And I'm going to be painting and wiping back with baby wipes once that's all glued in situ. That's going to make a huge difference, I think. Okay, so I'll come back to you as soon as I've done that and we can get a bit more paint on and get going with our baby wipes with some wet distressing. Right, well that's gone on absolutely fine. You can see my second inner layer of paper clay go on in there and I've managed to get it joined up quite nicely and don't forget paint will hide any any little bits that I'm not entirely happy with. So we're going to get on and put some more paint on this. Um, so we're going to be using uh, the paints that I had yesterday, which I kept in cling film. So they're all nice and moist still. Okay. Um, and we are going to be using 50-50 um, white vinegar and water and then I'm going to come back to you when I'm ready to do a little bit of wet distressing. Okie doke. Okay, so that's all done and dried. And then I've gone in and I've used my paler colour, um, which is this sort of creamy pale ochre it's called. And I've just gone in. This is just going to highlight areas. Okay, can you see how that's going in and it's just highlighting these areas? But I don't really want to lose any of those colours underneath. So what I mean by wet distressing is while everything is still a bit movable, I've got my baby wipes here. And you're going to just pull back some of those colours and revealing what's underneath. Can you see how that's going? So just pulling back and revealing. So you've got a myriad of colours coming off in there. Yep. You can give it a little rub, should you need to. There's my little B. So I've applied some of the cream to around the base as well. So let's get the baby right. so many things. So again, let's see, shall I turn or shall we go? Okay, there we go. So again, using a rubbing motion to get into these grooves, I'm just going to be wet distressing. So that I can really start to see some of those under layers. coming up here. Can you see that? Well, it's just bringing out, it's taking away some of the top layers and bringing out the colour from underneath. Okay. I'm going to carry on with that and then 
I think I've got a little secret weapon that I might share with you. Watch this space. Okay, so the uh, wet distressing has worked really well. I've managed to pull back lots of layers on there, so that's looking really good. Um, I might have to go in and do a bit more around the uh, paper clay because it's still a little bit soft and I don't want to be rubbing into that too much. So, what I've done now, if you can see here, I have gone on and put on some um, Craig and Rose. Um, this is meta metallic copper paint, so it's actually got the metal in the paint, it's not just the colour. And you put one layer on, let it dry completely, and then I'm going to go in now and put a second layer on, and while that's still wet, I'm going to go over it with the Craig and Rose, the green patina spray. Um, patina. I, I was going to say spray. I've decanted some into a little spray bottle. It does say on this not to spray it, to use a brush, but I'm going to be naughty. Okay, so let's just get on with getting some of this second layer on. Bring you down so you can see what I'm doing. This is the second layer of my copper. I'm just applying it liberally with a small artist's paintbrush. I just didn't want to get too slap happy with it. And this is just a kind of a bit of an experiment on here. So I've this is why I'm doing it on the underneath part, because if I don't like it, then I'm just going to be painting over it. Because this wasn't in my original plan. But you know how things progress, and that's fine. You don't have to stick to your original plan. Okay. Now this does take time to, to work, and it's a natural process speeded up, basically. So this metallic paint, the spray is going to react with the air, and it's that that forms the patina colour. So, as I say, I'm not supposed to spray it, but I am. I'm just going to let it run down the copper. Now this will have to dry. It's best if it dries naturally. So you'll have to come back to me to see the results on that. All right. So I'm going to let that dry off. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. Um, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> so I'm going to let that dry off and I'll come back to you when that's ready. Well, hi. Where we were up to last time, I had just applied the copper to the base. So I've just brushed on the metallic uh, copper paint and then sprayed in the, uh, the green patina, which activates it and turns it uh, green. So you've got that nice bird degree effect going on. I was so pleased with that that I went ahead and did the whole piece. And I think you will agree but that looks rather super. It's gone all the way onto the base. The base is still turning at the moment um, because that was the last piece I did, so the copper is still activating. Uh, I think you'll agree that looks rather lovely. I'm certainly very pleased with it. Um, I'm not going to seal it because the longer I leave this, the more it will activate. It was just a natural process that it will activate as long as it's um, exposed to air. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this video. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Painted Lady. I'm also going to put into the, um, into the comments a link to Fairy Chic Emporium YouTube channel so that you can go ahead and see what Paul has done. And if you like it, if you want more of this, then we are so happy to go thrifting again. Two ninety five, and I think you'll agree it's turned into a beautiful looking object that I'm gonna I'm gonna be using this in the home somewhere you can just throw your keys and general paraphernalia before you're going out and you know what have you. So thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.